So what you're currently hearing now is the voice processing presets being applied to my voice, and now I'm gonna turn it off. So what you're hearing now is the processing not turned on, and as you can hear, it's a pretty big difference. So I'm gonna turn it back on. Now my voice is being processed again. So maybe your podcast sounded like my voice when the processing was not being applied. So you might not even know that you could apply audio processing to your voice to make your podcast sound great. Or maybe you've been dabbling and you've been trying to make your podcast sound better. As of now, the presets are available for Adobe Audition, Logic Pro 10, GarageBand, and Audacity. I will be adding more programs, so don't worry if your program isn't there. You can sign up to my newsletter at the bottom of my website. Hey, my name is Ryan Freeman, and thank you for joining me today. I've won a Webby Award for Best Sound Design and Original Music for a podcast that I produce and engineer, and I thought it'd be pretty cool to create presets for you to have that emulate my sound and processing chain and techniques. So I think first impressions are everything, and it's a known fact that a new listener will turn off your podcast or stop listening if the audio quality is bad. Podcasting is an audible experience, so having the best sound quality should be of paramount importance. So what these presets do is it balances the volume of your voice. So if you have a guest on, your voice isn't louder than theirs and vice versa. So it's not annoying to your listeners and the volume is even across the show. It removes that classic muddy sound that a lot of microphones have and that your podcast might currently have uh, that's kind of hard to get rid of. But what it does, it gives you this nice full round sound and also a nice kind of crisp clarity as well. So you're not really losing any body to the sound, but if anything, it's just sounding more upfront and more present and very easy to listen to. And to me, what I think is the best feature about these presets is that saves you time and time equals money. So no more like spending hours just messing around trying to fine tune guest vocals or maybe your own voice. There's 20 presets for you to choose from to really fine tune your voice, both for male and female voices. And I've also tested many microphones with these presets from my iPhone 7 microphone, the Blue Yeti USB microphone. I have the Shure SM7B and of course the Electro Voice RE20 which is my go-to. Of course, there's slight variations, but I do think it can make a cheap microphone sound pretty awesome. So what is a preset? It's a pre-saved collection of effects and settings. In this case, the effects have been ordered in a specific sequence, hence the processing chain, and each effect has specific settings that I have fine-tuned to give you the best sound possible. Now you can apply my presets to your audio in your program to enhance your sound. The presets are simple to install and apply. You don't have to be an audio expert to use them. The idea is with these presets, I've done the work for you. So you don't have to spend countless hours constantly tweaking your sound. Using these presets will save you a lot of time, so you can really get back to focusing on what matters most, which is making and releasing your podcast. Now we're gonna go into the preset walkthrough portion of this video. I'm gonna be doing it in Logic Pro 10, which is my program of choice. So it doesn't matter what program you're working in, all the effects will sound the same and can be applied the same way. So when you download the presets either for Logic Pro, GarageBand, Adobe Audition, or Audacity, and of course for other future programs that I'll be adding in the next couple of months, you'll get a zip file, podcast voice processing, and for whatever program that you chose. So you'll wanna double click and unzip that file, and then you will get a folder and then within that folder you will have demos from a female and male voice you'll have some detailed install instructions on how to install the presets and it also includes an install walkthrough video i've created a folder guide so you can see exactly where to put your presets so they appear in your program making it as easy and simple for you to install as possible and then of course you have the folder with the presets themselves and this is the same for logic pro GarageBand. Adobe Audition. So when you go into the presets folder, it comes with 10 male presets and 10 female presets. Then each of these presets have been specifically designed and EQ'd to female and male voice types. And they're the same for male and female. We'll use the male presets as an example. We have low voice for a low male voice, a mid voice for a mid male voice, which I think my voice kind of falls into that range. We have a high voice, then we also have an other preset, which I made a preset for telephone calls. Um, so I know a lot of people like to record their interviews over the telephone. This preset is my attempt at trying to make telephone calls sound as good as they possibly can. And then within each of these low, mid, and high voice for both male and female, they're both the same, you get a light, medium, and hard preset. The medium preset in each of these low, mid, high voice folders is what I started with when I was building out these presets. 
So the medium is more or less my go-to to taste uh, processing for the specific tones of voices. And then if you're finding that the medium is just too processed for you, you can try the light. So that means there's lighter compression, lighter EQ, and lighter limiting. And then vice versa, of course, if you're finding that the medium just isn't processing your voice enough or you want it a little more compressed, you can go to the hard. So that's harder compression, more drastic EQ curves, and of course, slightly harder limiting. So really the beauty and ease of these presets is that it will save you a lot of time and that you can just very simply click through each of these types of processing presets until you find the exact sound that you're looking for that fits your voice. So as far as installing these presets, I do have a detailed walkthrough video and instructions on the learn section of my website. So if you're curious or if you've downloaded these presets already, you can head over there to see exactly how to install these presets in a more detailed overview. So now let's go into Logic Pro. So I've gone ahead and set up a raw audio track. This audio is recorded on the Electro Voice RE20. This is audio from the audio demos that I used on the product page for the presets. So something to keep in mind as you start to apply these presets is that the presets are made to handle audio that was recorded from minus 12 to minus 24 dB. So your audio should be peaking at minus 12 or somewhere just below that. It's very important what level is going into the processing presets, but if your audio is recorded louder or softer, don't worry, I do have a solution for you that will get your peaks to minus 12, not a problem. So I'm gonna play it with the processing off. This is an audio demo for Ryan Freeman's podcast voice processing presets, recorded on the Electro Voice RE20, the classic radio broadcast microphone. So as you can hear, we have a nice clean signal. I do recommend trying to record just a few inches away from the microphone so you do get that kind of close broadcast sound. That recording technique is the most pleasing to my ears, but of course, whatever your podcast calls for, definitely record that way. So we'll go into settings, and then once you've installed these presets, you will see them appear. It'll be Ryan Freeman podcast voice. In this case, male, I consider my voice to be a mid voice. Then we have the light, medium, and hard processing presets to choose from. The mediums are my go-to, which I definitely recommend you start with for either the low tone, the mid voice tone, or the high tone. And same with the females, recommend the medium. Those are my go-to presets. So I'll start with the medium and see how it sounds. This is an audio demo for Ryan Freeman's podcast voice processing presets, recorded on the Electro Voice RE20, the classic radio broadcast microphone. So I'll show you what it sounded like before. This is an audio demo for Ryan Freeman's podcast voice processing presets, recorded on the Electro Voice RE20, the classic radio broadcast microphone. And after. Recorded on the Electro Voice RE20, the classic radio broadcast microphone. And as you can hear right out of the box, it sounds great. I'm gonna show you how you can fine tune these presets if you do need to fine tune it. Of course, it depends on your preference. If you like something that's a little more bassy or something that's a little more bright, you can easily tweak these presets to get you to where you wanna be. To quickly go through each effect in the preset, these effects are ordered in a specific manner and each effect has its own specific pre-saved settings. And the order of these settings and the sound that it delivers is exactly the same no matter what program you're using. So what you're hearing here in Logic Pro will sound the same in GarageBand, will sound the same in Adobe Audition, and of course in Audacity and any other future programs I'll be adding. As you can see, upon loading the preset, the gain and noise gate settings are both turned off. I included the gain effect as a solution to your audio being too loud or too quiet as the first thing going through the processing chain. Like I said, you want the peaks to be around minus 12. So if your audio is a little too quiet, you can simply turn it up so it's peaking at minus 12 or vice versa. If it's too loud, you can just simply turn down the gain so it's peaking at minus 12. This is an audio demo for Ryan Freeman's podcast voice processing presets recorded on the electro. So in this case, it's sitting somewhere nicely in between minus 24 and minus 12. If you wanted, you could turn it up a couple dB. Of course, that's the idea, or you can turn it down, whatever you need to do. But for me, I'm happy with the way it sounds. I've also included a noise gate. As you can see, I initially have the effect turned off, and these noise gates are set up to be triggered and work perfectly with audio that is peaking at minus 12. As you can see, the audio goes from a gain, your audio signal goes top down, to your gain, your noise gate, EQ, compressor, compressor, channel EQ, de-esser, limiter, and out. 
That's really how the processing chain works. So these effects are set up in a specific order to process your audio in a specific way. So if you need a noise gate, it is there. As I usually don't use it, I will cut out the noise myself when I am editing a podcast. So the first active effect in the processing chain is an EQ. What this is doing is cutting off any noise below 40 hertz and any noise above 20K. So this is really unnecessary noise that your ears can't really even hear. Perhaps some subwoofers will be activated by noise below 40 hertz, but really it is just unnecessary noise. So if there's a fan, if there's air conditioning or some outside noise going on, this really re reduces the low end rumble and just helps clean up your audio as it's starting to enter the compressors. I use two compressors in the presets. The first compressor is always slightly harder. That meaning the attack and release is quicker and the ratio is slightly higher. This is to help tame the peaks of your audio and your voice as you're speaking. It really does bring down those high drastic kind of volume inflections and it acts really quickly. Once the peaks are tamed, it will enter a second phase of compression. This is a lot gentler at a lower ratio and this compression has a slower attack and release. So having the two compressors, the first one that's a little more aggressive with the faster and quicker release, and then also with the second one that has a bit of a smoother ratio and smoother attack and release, it really helps round out your sound, giving it a nice broadcast quality type of compression, where instead of just making one compressor do all the work, I like to use two to kind of space out the sound so that both compressors can be doing something slightly different, but working together to deliver a high quality compression. Then after the compressors, we have an EQ. This is where a lot of the magic happens in my opinion. This is my classic EQ curve that I throw on all of my vocals. And I really do find this EQ sounds amazing on different types of microphones and different tones of voices for male and female. After that EQ, we have a de which helps take out some of those S, the harsh S's in the vocals. And then finally, we have the limiter at the end of the processing chain, which of course gets your volume up to a specific standard and it keeps it from distorting. So as it all works in unison, this is what you get. I'll just toggle it on and off so you can hear what it's doing and how much it's actually improving the sound. These presets are designed for both male and female voices of all tones. These presets are designed for both male and female voices of all tones. They've been created to sound great with any microphone. They've been created to sound great with any microphone, from an entry-level USB mic, a moderate pro sumer mic, or a professional mic being run through preamps. From an entry-level USB mic, a moderate pro sumer mic, or a professional mic being run through preamps. So as you can hear, there is a very drastic difference. The compression sounds amazing. The EQ is perfect. The S's aren't too harsh. And this is my go-to setting. And like I said, it's the same in Logic, GarageBand, Adobe Audition, and other programs that I'll be adding and Audacity. And the idea is that you don't have to do any tweaking to these presets. They sound amazing out of the box and you can kind of click through the different settings until you find the sound that works best for you. Now, if you do want to tweak some of these settings to get a different kind of sound, the easiest way to do this is just simply turning some of them off. So say it's sounding too crunchy, too compressed for your liking. I'd actually recommend turning off the first compressor because that's the more intense, the faster attack and release. Um, and the second one is a little more smoother. So I think it will sound a little more natural for your voice if you do want to tone down some of the compression. It's as easy as that. And if you do want to tweak the overall tone of your voice, if you are not happy with it, say it's too bright or there's not enough bass or if it's still sounding a little too muddy for your liking, it's very simple. You can go in here and it's the same with Logic Pro, GarageBand, Adobe Audition and other programs. You can simply click on the section that you want to enhance or lower and just simply give it a boost. So if you're finding your voice a little too harsh, I'd recommend bringing that down until you're happy with it. If you're finding that your voice just doesn't have enough bass to your liking, just play around and give it a little boost until you're happy. If you find that it's sounding too thin, maybe remove this and add a little more of that mid. So it is fairly simple to tweak. If you do want to do some tweaking, like I said, maybe start with the compressors, take off the first compression and see what happens. And then if you want to change the tone of your voice, go into the EQ and just play around with these EQ settings a little bit until you are happy with your desired sound. 
So by choosing to use these presets, I think you're gonna save yourself a lot of time so you don't have to tweak your voice or guest voice that are constantly coming on. And I know that everyone has a different podcast setup, so I spent a lot of time making sure that these presets work for entry-level setups to advanced setups. It doesn't matter if you have a USB microphone to one of these professional broadcast microphones or even out in the field recording on your iPhone, these presets will enhance your audio. Thank you for spending some time with me today and for your continued support. I know that these presets will really help you out and I'd love to hear what you make with them.